everyone, welcome back to our third and final day of Home to You with Laridal from IMSH in Los Angeles, California. Today we will have some discussions with Dr. Desiree Diaz, the Gordon Center at the University of Miami, and some conference attendees. Stay tuned and enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm sitting here with Dr. Desiree Diaz. Um, Desiree, could you just tell us a little bit about your background and maybe you know what you're doing in simulation currently? Sure, good morning everyone. I am an uh, associate professor at the University of Central Florida. My research area is in healthcare diversities, diversity, equity, inclusion within the simulation space. So really trying to change human health one ripple at a time because we're not direct care in simulation. Uh, and right now, we're really starting to see those trends and policies because of the exposure. So I appreciate you doing this for the audience watching today. Oh, no problem at all. And uh, I know you mentioned healthcare disparities and you know diversity as well. So kind of what role do you think that plays in simulation? How important is it? Well, I think it should have been a role in simulation for a long time before now. And we must mimic not only our community, the goods, but also the bad so we can change behavior. So the worst part of healthcare disparities is that the, the pendulum hasn't really swung. So we have to start to move and make deliberate practice related to healthcare disparities. And I think simulation is the place to start. There are a lot of people that have never been exposed or experienced disparities, thank goodness for them, but there's a bigger population that have. So really starting to give them a framework in which they can operate in practice. Awesome, yeah, that was a great answer. And uh, I know we're here at, you know, on the, the show floor of IMSH in Los Angeles. Um, is there anything that you've seen on the floor or maybe some market trends moving into 2022 that you know, think will reign prominent as we move forward with the year? I think coming up is between hologram technology, AR technology, ARXR, um, all the mixed realities coming to, how do we transpose that into academia? Because there's always a difference of cost factors with that. But also it leverages some opportunities, especially with in the pandemic. And I think that's what's really pushed us forward with limited clinical space and those types of things. So I'm really watching that trend and trying to be on the forefront of that with some of the changes. But in that same regard, we need to be careful as to what we implement, how we implement it. And then also, what do you pull out of curriculum? You can't keep adding to the curriculum. So it'll be interesting to see and hopefully some good research studies will be coming out. Desiree, is there anything that someone maybe could do to uh, start addressing healthcare disparities and, or diversity in simulation? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's just to get started. So wherever you're at, start someplace. You can start by implicit bias training. So Harvard has free implicit bias tests just to see where you as an educator are. Then you can start off by implementing scenarios if you don't want to write a scenario at first related to healthcare disparities, Laredal does have some scenarios that particular for healthcare disparities. I am the author on two of those, one with healthcare disparities related to maternal child infant mortality, gestational diabetes, and everything that goes with that. So you're really able to bring in not just the medical aspect, but everything else that goes with it. If that is just a little too much. You don't want to go a high fidelity scenario um, within your facility. You can try AR, XR, or total virtual reality environment and really start to feel some of those nuances that go with healthcare disparities. And there are some out there on the floor today. So if you're out there, check, check them out. Great. Well, uh, thanks, Desiree. And, uh, and I just wanted to say thank you again for your time. And uh, we appreciate you doing this. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your IMSH and a safe travel home. Thank you for having me. Likewise. Thanks. Hey, everybody. We're here from IMSH. Uh, my name is Nathaniel Reitman. I'm the product marketing manager for the SimMan Medical Emergency Trauma Portfolio. Today, I wanted to take you through our new SimMan 3G Plus. So SimMan 3G Plus takes the existing 3G platform, and basically what we did is just heighten the realism all across the board. So a lot of the magic happened up here in the face, where we did a lot of work to enhance the realism and really represent a diverse range of patients. So there are a couple new face skins that come, 
and those are silicone, which enable moulage to be applied and wiped off easily, enables it to be a little bit cleaner, feel a little bit more realistic. The arms are also where a lot of the magic has happened in Simman 3G+. Those are silicone as well to enable for that easy cleaning, easy wipe off of uh, any sort of moulage that they might use. Now, another thing we did with 3G+, is the arms move. If you remember 3G, you might remember that old, you know, single motion arm. This allows the, the realism uh, for real patient handling to be much more improved over the 3G lineup. So we're really excited to roll out a lot of these features. Bilateral feature sets are on either side of the arm. We have deltoid intramuscular injections, humeral IO capabilities now with uh, IV drains coming out of the back. Additionally, we have bilateral pulse points at the um, radial pulses, brachial pulses, all the way down even into the feet and under the knee and the popliteal pulses. So a lot of cool things that learners can train on either side. We also added some real clinical device usage onto the 3G Plus platform. So you might notice these gold discs here. That kind of takes away the old um, leads that used to go on for um, the simulated uh, defibrillation that could be done with him, and this is called Live Shock. So Live Shock uses real pads, real paddles for um, delivering a real shock to this mannequin. So it really enhances the uh, the training element of that as well. On each of the fingers, the forefinger on each side, he's got um, the capability to connect with real pulse oximeters. So those pulse oximeters go right on here, and they connect to the real machines, and you get an actual reading from our Leap software. Uh, one of the uh, final places that we added some real clinical device usage to is the arm. So the blood pressure cuff is a non-invasive blood pressure, and that can be taken on either arm now. And that connects to a real clinical monitor to enhance the realism using some of the real equipment. Now, one of the things we have up on the screen here is one of our partner products, and that is the Sonosim. So there's a bunch of little tags underneath this skin that we could show you if you come and get a little bit more hands-on with us at some point, or request a demo from one of your Lairdall support representatives. And it takes one of these probes, and we can actually see some real, some real images from uh, clinical cases on here. So we've got one of them going here. And if you go to each of the different anatomical landmarks, you'll see a couple more other ones pop up. So that's just a brief overview of what we have to offer today with 3G+. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website for more details. And uh, if you uh, have any other questions, you know we're here at IMSH, and we hope to uh, bring you some more content live through the rest of the show. So. Cheers, and hope you guys have a good one. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Dr. Ross Galise from uh, the Gordon Center. Ross, could you just give us a quick background on the Gordon Center's mission and kind of you know, what the Gordon Center does for simulation? Okay, well, the Gordon Center is a center of excellence of the University of Miami. It's founded by Dr. Michael Gordon, a cardiologist, um, almost 50 years ago. Um, our mission is saving lives through simulation technology, and so we have a focus on applying innovative methods, including simulation and other e-learning and other technological solutions, to improving education. We hope that those we train will take better care of patients. Um, it all started with Harvey, the cardiopulmonary patient simulator, more than 50 years ago, which is designed to teach a very fundamental skill, bedside physical examination and diagnostic reasoning. From there, it grew uh, to include a very large division devoted to pre-hospital and emergency training. Um, and we work across the spectrum of learners, not just medical students at our, at our own medical school, but nursing students, physician assistant students, residents and others in postgraduate training, and even practicing clinicians. Great, thanks. And I know uh, we're early in the new year here in uh, 2022. Do you think there's any trends or um, simulation market um, ideas or anything that will be prominent as we move forward through the year? Well, I know that uh, here in the exhibit hall, it seems like virtual technologies have, have figured very prominently. And um, we are, in fact, looking at um, augmented reality applications uh, to improve um, our Harvey system. Uh, but beyond that, I, I think back to, you know, we're kind of at this period where we're maybe starting to emerge from the pandemic and some of the trends that were necessitated by the pandemic like virtual patient encounters um, in the clinical space, telemedicine, although they were kind of prompted by the, the needs uh, during the COVID pandemic, I think some of those trends are going to continue to stay. So I think in clinical medicine, we're still going to be having 
telemedicine, virtual patient visits. And then the educational side, I think we're still going to be doing things like remote OSCEs or very importantly, hybrid courses. So not just pure remote, or pure in-person, but kind of capturing the best of both worlds um, so that you can maybe do some of the didactics online and then come in for hands-on application and practice of skills. Absolutely. So, um, like I said, we're standing here on the floor at IMSH. Uh, is there anything that you may have seen or stood out or any maybe uh, mementos that someone may have won? Well, for me, a, a highlight was at this meeting, um, I was inducted as a fellow of the SSH Academy. Um, so, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so that, that, that'll probably be the, the highlight memory for me from this year's meeting. That's great. Well, I just wanted to thank you for your time and uh, the Gordon Center for being a great partner. And uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Oh, I love IMSH. It's, it will be a bad day when I miss a year at IMSH. Uh, uh, it's great, as always, uh, to be here to see folks reconnecting. Mm -hmm. The opening session this morning was fantastic on transformative leadership. Uh, speaking about diversity and our biases and trying to manage those, I, 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 it gave us a lot to think about, a lot to unpack, and uh, I think it was fantastic. Probably one of the best uh, speakers I've heard in quite a while. <laughs> well, probably the biggest surprise that we actually were successful in getting as many people we do have here. I'm not sure that I expected this many folks because... I know even right before I left, folks were uh, not able to attend uh, because of the pandemic and the impact, and they were canceling at the last minute. So I wasn't even sure how many to expect. And I think the biggest surprise is there's a lot more than I thought there would be. In my honest opinion, that, that is the reason of IMSH, <laughs> to come and network. And it's networking with everybody. It's uh, the people you've we've seen on Zoom for the last two years to reconnect with them, our friends reconnecting, um, and even our vendor colleagues and friends. I mean, uh, you know, I've been in IMSH and involved for years, and it's just neat, neat to reconnect with them as well. I have been enjoying the meeting. I think it, uh, it has been an interesting opportunity to think about a lot of things about gender, social uh, biases and things that are very interesting for me and the, to explore technology. So today's session, the opening session of, the, of, the, of this day, uh, and uh, she was talking about uh, um, unconscious biases. I think uh, it was amazing. She was uh, charming. I think that the most surprising uh, of the exhibited hall for me was the combination between a physical simulation and virtual reality opportunities. For us, the network is very important here at IMSH. I, I have the opportunity to, to share with uh, some German uh, friends, uh, Portuguese friends, Italian friends, Spanish friends, Mexican friends. And for me, I came from Chile. Uh, it's a big opportunity to share with uh, all of them. Oh, I'm loving it. It's a, it's a great experience. It's not my first, but um, it's one of the best conferences for simulation. I'm having a great time. The session on uh, learning about um, getting my SimCenter accredited, very helpful. So yeah, that was probably the one I've enjoyed the most so far. The number of people that came in person, I'm so happy to see that, that you know, there's a lot of folks here to network with and run into and, um, and just see again since we've not been able to do this for a little while. Yeah, so lots, really. I mean, um, from sitting in sessions next to people that I don't know or um, people that I've gotten to know and meet just th this um, uh, conference, um, I've, you know, I've, I've actually made some connections of folks I'm going to do some research with um, and um, people that are in my own state that now I just bumped into someone who lives a couple hours away and we're going to visit each other's sim centers. So, yeah, it's the, the networking's been fantastic. And that concludes day three of Laridol's Home to You video roundup series from IMSH. This was a new concept for Laridol, so please leave a comment below and let us know how you liked it. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you then.